Hey there, this is DW, and I wanted to give you a few tips on preparing for PCHEM this fall. <clears throat> we have about one week left, and so now's the time to make sure you have all the materials that you need. The syllabus is not quite ready, but I will email that out to the group when it's finished. And today I wanted to focus on uh, an unexpected uh, part of preparing for PCHEM. Uh, let me just take a break here, though, and talk about my library here. You know, if I look back at, uh, at the books that I had to buy when I was in school, uh, I think that the attitude was a little different. And so let me tell you about some of my favorite books here. This is one of my favorites here. This is Advanced Inorganic Chemistry by Cotton and Wilkinson. And I wanted to point out that even though for my inorganic class, this book was required, you see the colored portions in this book. Those are the only sections we had to read in this whole huge uh, book for that course. And so if one is to take a pragmatic view of only wanting the information they need for the test, that's a very short-sighted and limited view of the resources that you're required to have for a particular course. You're not buying a book to pass the test. You're buying a book to add to your library. And so this book has been an incredible resource. If I needed to know anything about organometallic chemistry, coordination chemistry, uh, ionization potentials and the reactivity of ions, of all of the transition metals and even actinides and lanthanides. This is a great reference book and I'm very happy that I bought it and kept it. Another one of my favorite books is this one. <clears throat> this was my analytical chemistry book. Now this course uh, was very interesting. They allowed us to have uh, open book tests and so I beat this book into submission. You see the different tabs related to all the different materials so I could quickly cut to the section that I needed on a given exam. I unsuccessfully tried to do open book tests one year in PCHEM and the students didn't prepare this way so they spent the whole time just flipping pages and actually had nothing written down on the exam when time was up. But anyway, that's an aside. Uh, I'm very glad that this was my analytical chemistry book and then when I got my first teaching job at West Texas A&M and I was teaching analytical chemistry I knew exactly how to prepare my notes and went right to these tab sections in this book. Let's see, some of the other fantastic books that I like. I've got a selection of Gen Chem books. Um, this <clears throat> is one of my favorites, Environmental Chemistry by Stanley Manahan. I used this book when I taught environmental chemistry at West Texas A&M. And this was the first book that taught me that what a chemist thinks of as water is not what an environmental chemist thinks of as water. A chemist thinks water is H2O. An environmental chemist thinks of water as having bacteria, algae, all kinds of minerals it dissolved in it. And so water in the, in the hydrosphere is much different than water in a volumetric flask. You learn that by reading the book. <clears throat> so what do you need for PCHEM? Well, the, this is the time, it's one week out to buy the book for the course. I'm requiring you to have this book, the 11th edition of Atkins Physical Chemistry. And I want everybody to have the same edition. So go buy this book. You're not buying this book to pass a test. You're not buying this book for one semester class. You're buying this book to build your library. And so when you have this library in the future, you can use the materials in these books to answer the questions that come up as you practice chemistry. Now, in order to prepare for the class, get this book and begin reading Focus 7 because our first topic is in quantum mechanics. And so you'll want to read the introduction to quantum theory uh, before the week one of our PCHEM class. Now, day one on Wednesday, we'll probably just go over the syllabus and, and I'll talk about some of the history of quantum theory. And then Friday that week, we'll really get into the material. <clears throat> so there's a picture of the required book for PCHEM 1. You might want also to look at some of the supplementary materials. Um, you know, if you would like to look at the solutions manual, this is an optional purchase. But this has uh, full solutions for some of the problems in the text. Bottom line is you want to take your undergraduate curriculum and build in a library of resource materials so that you don't just get to the end of the semester and flush the brain from all the material that you learned that semester 
and then go on into the future without any tools to carry forward. You need to develop a library. You can't remember it all. And so having a nice selection of books that go with you wherever you go in the future, whether it be into graduate school or going into industry, you really need to focus on uh, building yourself as a resource for information and as uh, having a reach back of that information so you can use it to solve problems. Because uh, in the end, that's what we are. We're, we're problem solvers. So hopefully this will get you ready for the fall semester and also give you a different perspective on how to build your library for the future as a chemist. All right, have a great day.